books written before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and trying to apply that as some kind of standard for salvation to the church, which is confusing people. All right? So I'm just going to show you a good rule of thumb for rightly dividing. All right? Please don't let me in and go, she's a mid-acts dispensationalist. She's this. No, I'm rightly dividing the word. Now, why would we be given the instructions to divide the word if you didn't have to divide it? To whom is he speaking? Under what covenant? All right, we have to look at that. So, let's look at 2 Timothy. Now, let me remind you, all scripture is profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. All right? All of it is good for us. But you have to rightly divide it. I mean, the Old Testament points to Jesus everywhere. You know, it's wonderful. But when he tells you to stone disobedient kids or adulterers, is he talking to you now? I said the other day, you can't take descriptions of things that happen in the Old Testament and make them prescriptions for the New Covenant. It, it, you can't do it. It's confusion. So let's look at 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, if you didn't have to divide God's word to know to whom is he speaking, why would he tell you that? Because if you don't divide it, you get confusion. It says that they rest scriptures to their own destruction. Why? Because they're unlearned and unstable. All right? They don't know where they are. They're, they're not sure. So let's look over here. Now, I'm going to, I grabbed my King James Bible. I'm going to go through it, and we're going to open up the epistles and see, hey, who are they talking to? Maybe we can get an idea of what I'm talking about. All right? So let me just remind you, the four Gospels were written during the Old Covenant. Although it's under the New Testament section of our Bible, they were still under the Old Testament. All right? And Jesus came to Israel. Paul confirms it. He says he came to confirm the promises made to the fathers. All right? But let me prove Jesus himself said he only came for Israel at his first coming. Let me show you that. Now, this had to play out so that Paul tells us that Israel became temporarily blinded so that the rest of the world could be offered salvation through Christ, all right? But Jesus' first coming was to fulfill the promises to Israel that their Messiah would come. And he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom to them, and, and, and you can't mix that up. All right, here we go. Matthew 15, 24. You cannot deny these. I don't care. You hate Israel. A lot of people hate them. I, I, they, they can't understand the difference between physical Israel and then like spiritual Israel. So they say I'm contradicting myself. I'm not. I'm dividing it. Matthew's, Matthew 15, 24. Now this is Jesus speaking. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but... Unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So who's he sent to? Only to the house of Israel. He, he says it right there. Then he instructs his apostles. All right. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right? So it was to Israel first. So when they were... Look. Listen to this. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, remember he came but for the lost sheep of the household of Israel. How long does thou make us to doubt? That's what Renee's saying. She's saying they're blind. She's saying right now they're blind. So they're blaming who for making them doubt? It's because they're seeking a quote unquote what? Sign, right? How long does thou make us doubt? If thou be Christ, they said what? Plainly tell us. 
See, there's there who are they blaming for for making them doubt? Who are they blaming for their blindness? They don't see themselves as blind, but who are they? They're saying, look, you're making me doubt. Now, here's what I got to ask you. So, so Renee is trying to tell you guys that now is this a different time? He says they're, they are blinded. And my question for you is who's blinded? Because, again, you got to remember, Calvinism teaches the same concept that, you know, basically... These people can't believe, and the reason they can't believe is because God has to give them the spirit, and then they can believe. Well, wait a minute. Isn't that exactly what these guys are teaching? They're teaching that not only are the individual people who heard Christ, like if Christ went and speaks, God in Christ goes and speaks to a crowd, right? And there's people in that crowd who call themselves Jews. And then some of them listen, and they actually believe, and some of them did not believe. Now, the ones who did not believe, whose fault is it that they didn't believe? It's their fault that they didn't believe. It's their fault they didn't believe. Now, are you telling me because they didn't believe that when they go home, all of a sudden their children and their wife and all that stuff, and then their children's children don't believe? You know what, you know what you're making, God, when you do that? When you say, oh, well, not only because they rejected the word of truth, are they blind, but their children and their children's children, children are blind. Meaning they can't even believe or receive the truth. And so that's what these guys are teaching. It's, it's Calvinism. It's, it's called total depravity. They're teaching that these guys are basically totally depraved. See, they don't say it that way, but you got to ask Renee, you say, wait a minute, Renee, you, are you saying that God blinded? Because this happened. How long ago did this happen? So if we're in the quote unquote church age, how long have these people been quote unquote blinded? Because the people, this is back, what, supposedly 2000 something years ago. And so how many generations have been born of these, of these same people who Renee and these people say, oh, they're blinded. Do you see the problem? Just because you reject it doesn't mean your wife doesn't reject it. It doesn't mean just because you reject doesn't mean your wife automatically rejected it. Just because you don't believe the truth and you're not saved doesn't mean your wife and your children and your children's children doesn't mean they're going to reject it. That's why Jesus says, I came to bring a sword. He came to divide. Christ came to divide the sheep from the goats. Didn't he not say that, guys? And so when you go to, he says, they say, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I told you and you believe me not. He said, you believe me. Now, he didn't say, well, you don't believe and your children's children. No, what will happen is if they go home and if they start telling their children, hey, don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then they blinded. They're, they're the ones who are making people two folds the sons of hell and when they first found them. Remember, they're the one who compass land and sea to find a proselyte. And when they are found them, they'll make them twice the son of hell and when they first found them. They're doing that. That's what the Bible says. So this lie that they're they're blind, who blinded them? And who is who are they? Because the people who are blinded are the people who heard then and didn't believe at that time. Each person on their own has to hear the gospel and believe it. It's no quote group belief. Oh, we as a group, if one of us believes, then all of us believe, but if one of us doubts, then all of us doubt. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. The gospel was preached unto them as well as unto us, but it did not profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. So when they say, how long has thou make us a doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered and told them, I tell you, you believe not the works that I do in my, whose name? In my father's name. Who's his name? Jesus. So what's the name of the father? Jesus answered them. I told you, you believe me not. The works that I do in in my father's name, they bear witness of me. It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is true. That's first John five, six. Look it up. God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. Now, because you believe not because you said, but ye believe not. Wait a minute. Who is he talking to? Then came the Jews. These people call themselves Jews, right? He came but for the lost sheep of the household of Israel, right? But ye believe not. 
because ye are what? Not of my sheep. So when she talks about, oh, they follow him, and she's saying she tries to skip over certain verses. See, Renee is crafty as hell. Ye believe not, because you are not my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Now, Renee is trying to say in her thing, when they say follow me, he's talking about, see, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof leadeth unto death. There's a way that seems right to a man. Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, because Gentiles are heathens. They are pagans. Gentiles are unbelievers. That's in Malachi 1.11. Look it up. So he says, I am the what? Way. And he's the good what? Shepherd. And his sheep follow him by doing what? They follow him into what? Eternal life. See, because Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose what? Again, the third day. And it says, he was quickened by the spirit. God raised him from the dead. And he says right here, I give unto them eternal life. Now you got to ask Renee. No, Renee, I thought you said there was only one plan of salvation. Get written, Renee. I thought you said now nah, you said, Renee, that there was only one plan of salvation. Now, why are you taking this verse and saying they follow me and pretending that it's talking about the flesh? When Jesus is talking about getting eternal life and entering into heaven, Renee, now you know, unless you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So when he says he's following me, he's talking about being regenerated and born again into the kingdom. But how does Renee do it? Renee says, mm -mm. we will discuss how we rightly divide the word of truth so that we know what it is about salvation service, which covenant and to whom it is written versus like, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me, confuse people, and as following Jesus as part of salvation. But was that about the body of Christ? Uh, yeah, because there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, Renee. And I'm going to prove to her that when he says follow is what? Follow, because he's telling you, look, who who is a real uh, Jew? Who is a real sheep? Because you got to be born again, Renee. You got to be born again. Look, and here Jesus shows up again in Matthew. And Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you. See, because there's people who are of the flesh. And it says they're not all Israel who love Israel. Neither because they're the seed of Abraham are they all children. That is the children of the flesh, Renee. These are not the children of God. God's a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. See, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. See, you right now you're born of the flesh. You're carnal right? You're temporal. It says the things which are seen are temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. The things which are seen are temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. Well, he came to give eternal life. So you can't see who, who God's people are because God is a God of the living and not the dead. It's in your Bible. Look it up. God is a God of the living and not the dead. So, if Jesus came to give life and you, there's only salvation is found in him and he says, I, I am the way, the truth, the life. You can't say, well, there's God people. God's people are outside of Christ. You can't see, well, God's people are God's God of the living. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. And then Renee is like, well, that's not written to you. And then she tries to confuse what follow means. Well, here we go. And Jesus said unto them, really, I say unto you that they, that ye, 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 Ye which have followed me in the what? In the regeneration. In the regeneration. You must be born again. Right? Regeneration. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Renee is such a liar. She is such a liar, guys. And so I go to the comments section, which I'm sure she's going to erase because she's been erasing my comments a lot lately. And so I write to her. I said, well, you look at Galatians 3.17 
And this I say, because she's talking about the two covenants, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, look, let's, let's just go to it on here. Galatians 3.17, right? Galatians 3.17. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God, where? In Christ. The law, which was what? 430 years after after so it's that's why it says from faith to faith the just shall live by faith that's like saying from grace to grace the just shall live by grace that's like saying after you heard and believe the gospel you're sealed with the holy spirit of promise that's like saying you've been born again that's like saying you've been generated that's like saying you're a new creature you're no longer of the flesh by spirit from spirit to spirit the just shall be baptized into christ by the spirit of the lord as many as they're led, look, let's listen, listen to this, guys. As many. Look, this is the follow. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Renee is such a liar. Renee is such a liar. And if you want to look and find out when the sons of God appear, Um, let's try Genesis 6, 2. Let's try Genesis 6, 4. Let's try, Gen let's go throughout all the Bible and Deuteron Deuteron let's go throughout all the Bibles talking about the sons of God. Renee is such a liar. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, but ye received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. She's in their video. She's talking about, well, in the Hebrews, blah, blah, blah. Well, funny, because it says, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh. See, the children of the flesh are not the children of God, Renee. Which correct us. We gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? You remember when they said, Jesus, they said, your, your mother, your sister, and your brother asked for thee. And Jesus says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? It's those that do the will of my father. And it's the will of the father that all who see the son believe on him have everlasting life. See, guys, Renee is such a liar. And so the Bible saying, look, the confirmed before in Christ in Galatians, right? So we go back. To Galatians 3.17. It says, look, it says the covenant that the was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which is 430 years after, cannot disannul, should make the promise of none effect. So that promise was given to anybody who would believe it and receive it. Anybody. But you know, let me show you a little trick. This is what Renee's teaching. Because you see how the covenant says in Christ? That means you got to be in Christ. You're either under the law. When you're born again, in Christ, see, the flesh is under the law, but the spirit has made me free from the law, right? So it says here in KJV, it says God in Christ. It says, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it would make the promise of none effect. So Renee was like, well, you can't say that because, see, you can't take things as before Jesus Christ, quote unquote, died on the cross. Well, let me show you something else. See, Renee is relying on your ignorance and she's feeding on it. And all that dwell upon the earth, let's say, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him who God's a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And if you're in the flesh, you did worship, you did sin. You can't lie and be like, well, when I was in the flesh and before I was born again, I didn't worship the devil. Yes, you did. It says he that committed sin is of the devil. And said, he that is born of God cannot sin because his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin. That's First John 3, 9. That's why it says you sealed in Christ. In Christ is no sin. No sin can get to that inner man, that spirit man, that man that's sanctified and sealed in God. And so it says, all that worship him on the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the book of life of the lamb slain when, guys? Renee. Well, you can't take things before the cross. That's the old covenant. That's why it says the covenant in Christ. 
slain from the foundation of the world. And if that covenant's in Christ, then what does that mean? That means salvation is found in no other. You got to be born again, baptized in the Christ, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, Renee. You can't claim you believe one gospel when you're teaching this mess you're teaching. You're lying. She's lying. So we go back to Galatians 2.17, and then I'm going to show you a trick with the comparisons of the new modern versions. It says the covenant was confirmed of God in Christ, the law, which is 430 years after, cannot disannul. Well, the new ones, guess what? CSB, notice, they took Christ out. The law, which came 34 years, they took Christ out. ESV, they took Christ out. All these other verses, NKJV, took Christ out, guys. NKJV, NLT, took Christ out. NIV, took Christ out. NASB took Christ out. NET took Christ out. You know why I took Christ out, guys? Because of this. Because unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout what? All ages, world without end. See, because you're, you're not Israel unless you're born again, because Israel is in Israel. Guess who Israel is, guys? I'll just type it in. Exodus 4.22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. For whom he did foreknow, whom he did foreknow, he did predestine, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Who's my who's my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? It's those that do the will of my father. And this is the will of him that sent me, that all who see the son and believe on him have everlasting life. That's why he's called Christ the first fruits. See, this is why it's the church throughout all ages, right? Who was in the garden, guys? But every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits. Who's the, who's the way, the truth, the life? Where's the tree of life? Who's the one? That, who's the one who, who's life and life eternal? Who says I come to give life and life more abundantly? Christ, the first fruits, and they that are Christ at His coming. Who's the firstborn? Christ, the first fruits, and afterwards they are they that are Christ at his coming. Renee is such a liar. Renee is such a liar. And just so you know, God is a God of the living. Not the dead. For he is not a God of the dead. So you ask Renee, you say, well, if though you say they're God's people, I'm confused. Do they have eternal life? And you say they're God's people and you say, but they're not the body of Christ. I thought, I thought life was found in Christ. I thought we need to be found in him, having not my own righteousness. I thought it was the spirit of righteousness. I thought it was the spirit that quickened it to give it life, the flesh profit of nothing, Renee. I thought you said you believed in one gospel. You're sitting here trying to tell us to believe that this group, that group, and all these other. But then they said, Jesus, this guy who said he was a Jew, and Jesus said, look, my sheep hear my voice. They know them, and they follow me. And he says, I give unto them eternal life. But you said there's only one salvation, Renee. I'm confused. How are you teaching that? Right? For he is not a God of the dead. We thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all what? Dead. Oh, I guess you must be born again. I guess you got to follow him in the regeneration, washing, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. But of the living, for all live unto him. Let's go back to what Renee says here. Renee is trying to teach that following means some kind of physical carnal falling, and she's really slick and slyly and subtly switched that over because she wants to deny that scripture. So I just showed you how all that changed. I showed you how that, that what that meant. And so if you go back to Renee's comment, guys, you just go back to it. Renee rolling here. Discuss how we rightly divide the word of truth so that we may know though what is about salvation under which covenant and to whom it is written. Nobody's saved under the law, guys. That's why you got to be born again from above. Jerusalem above is free. It's mother of us all, those of us who believe. Those of us who know that God is the spirit. And then she says, Verses like my sheep hear my voice and they follow me confuse people and adds following Jesus as part of salvation. I mean, I thought he was the good shepherd. 
I'm sure he doesn't lead us unto death. I thought he got the, I thought, I thought we had the victory in Christ. I thought if we were baptized in him, he says he, he's going to return. He goes to heaven. He says, lo, I go to prepare a place for you. So I'm pretty sure that we got to, we're going to follow him there. We're, we got to be born. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Renee. See, Renee, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof leadeth unto death. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Life is found in him, okay? You're a liar. By the way, all of sin and come short of the glory of God when it's asked, what must I do to be saved? Is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. The Bible says just believe. You got to believe the gospel. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. He was quickened by the spirit. See, there's a man, Jesus Christ. He's a mediator between God and man. And he, the man, Jesus Christ, had God in him, right? Right? But see, God is the what? Spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So the man, Jesus Christ, came in, in the, who was flesh, and God came in the likeness of the sinful, of sinful flesh, which was the man, Jesus Christ, the mediator between God and man. Now, we know a mediator is not a mediated one, but God is one. God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Now, that's God who's the head. That's the lamb. That's the father, because the father is the head of the household, and he leadeth the bride and the children, right? That's why it says the spirit and the bride say come because God is a spirit. And so God, who's the head, the lamb, who's married to New Jerusalem in Revelation 21, 9 through 10. Please look it up in your KJV. He's married to the lamb is married to New Jerusalem, who's mother of us all. Galatians 3, 26. Look it up. And when you read through that, it tells you about the children of the bondwoman are children of the flesh. But the children of the promise, which are children of the spirit, it says they are free. And it says, the children of the bond one, which are children of flesh, shall not be heir with children of the free one, which are children by the spirit. So the Bible is clearly telling us that. So as the Bible is telling that, he's saying he's separating the sheep from the goats. And all of those who stayed children of the flesh, that means they were not born again, Nicodemus. That means they're still a child of the flesh. And that means they have an unclean spirit in them. And light hath no communion with darkness. So Renee is lying to you. She's a liar. And so you got to be born again. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. So you got to be born again, a totally new creature. And so he's explaining that the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Hence in Hebrews, he's called the father of spirits. And since he's the father of spirits and that lamb is married to New Jerusalem and that New Jerusalem, it says, is the children of the promise, which receive the spirit after you heard and believe the gospel of your salvation, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. It's ex Bible is explaining to you that that which is born of spirit is spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. It says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's the spirit that quickeneth to give of life. The flesh profit of nothing. So the Bible is explaining that. And so we who are of the body of Christ, we are called the first fruits because the seed, which is the word, is fruitful and it multiplies. So you receive the word. Thy word is truth. Sanctify, sanctify me by thy word. Thy word is truth. So once you hear the gospel, you believe that gospel. And if you believe it, then you're a new creature in Christ because Christ is life. He is life. And so that's why it's saying the body is the first fruits because the head, who is the father, is the savior of the body. First fruits. Right? And that's why when you go to Exodus, it says Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And when they came out of Egypt, Egypt represented the bondage and the bondage is represented by the flesh. And that's why Paul says, who will deliver me from the body of this death? And if you look in Ephesians 5, 29 through 30, it says, we are of his flesh and of his bones also. But then it says, if the spirit of Christ be in you, it says the body is dead. Now, God is God of living and not the dead. So it's saying we are those who died to the flesh. And we live by the what? Spirit. It's the spirit that quickened the give of life, the flesh brought from nothing. So God raised him from the dead. I pray you believe it, man. Renee's a liar and she's a deceiver. You know, um, you got to... You, you, People, you got people come as an angel of light, guys, and you just gonna you're gonna have to test the spirits. So uh, let God be true and every man a liar. You gotta test the spirits. I just told you something. Renee told you something. She's telling you how the book's not for you. It's not for you. Blah blah blah, and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, she doesn't believe God when he says a Jew is not one outwardly, neither is there circumcision outwardly in the flesh, but a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is the heart by the spirit. She doesn't believe in the spirit. She doesn't believe it because then when it says, follow me, she can't take it that, wait a minute, he came but for the lost sheep of the household of Israel. A, a person who called himself a Jew was saying they were his sheep, and he said, no, you're not my sheep. So they didn't devise the whole scheme to try to get around that. And that's all she's doing. 
That's all she's doing. And by the way, the Bible she held up is a Jack Imp, Jack Imp, I think his name. That's a Jack Imp study Bible. That guy is a carnal Zionist. So for her to say, I don't believe in, in, in Zionist teaching, look at the, pause the video and look at the Bible she held up. I took a, I took a screenshot of it. It's a Jack M. Study Bible. So that that's you want to know why people are confused? She, she's hardening her heart to the truth. That's the problem. Praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Salvation is definitely a free gift. You got to have the right Jesus, guys. Can't have the wrong Jesus. So if you got that Trinity, that Trinity false God, you, you, you're, you're, you're not saved. Hate to tell you that, but that, I got to tell you that. That's the truth. You have to rightly divide. Now, in the original Textus Receptus, the verse who walk after the spirit, but not after, but um, not after the flesh, but after the spirit is not even in it. But even if you want to put it there, that who walk after the spirit, but not after, but um, not after the flesh, but after the spirit is not even in it. The rightly divide. Now, in the original Textus Receptus, the verse who walk after the spirit, but not after, but um, not after the flesh, but after the spirit is not even in it. But even the rightly divide. Now, in the original Textus Receptus, the verse who... Thank mm -hmm. you.